Fossil is one of the most popular fashion watch brands in the world. They've been a mainstay of online jewelers and department stores for as long as I can remember and until now, I've never actually tried one. Well, I've tried some of their subsidiary brands, but never the original Fossil one. To be honest, I've never wanted one because personally, I just don't like the way they look. I think a lot of their competition have more attractive offerings. Regardless, I figured I'd grab one of their highest rated models and see what the fuss was about. It's one of, if not the most requested brand on this channel after all. So I headed to Amazon, filtered the search results by average rating, and this Coachman chronograph was one of the very top results. The vast majority of the almost 4,000 reviews were approaching five stars, and I thought it looked half decent from the product images. Perhaps this was a fossil worth my time and worth reviewing. So Amazon shipped me the watch, which we'll discuss later. I have it in front of me here. Let's see why everyone is rating this watch so highly. The watch arrived in this colorful tin, which I really like. It gives a nice retro feel and certainly stands out against some of the blander boxes I'm familiar with. When you open the tin though, the watch is stuffed into a cheap cardboard inner, which feels like a McDonald's cup holder according to Phoebe. And I have to say, she's bang on the money with that one. This is the first time I've come across this. Even other cheaper watches have come with what I would consider to be more protective linings. It's not the best start. As you can tell, this is a pretty hefty watch. With a 44 millimeter diameter, 12.6 millimeter depth, and a 52 millimeter look to look. Clearly this doesn't fit my thin wrist, but I'm not gonna let that factor sway my thoughts on the watch. I'm sure for many of you watching, the size won't be an issue. I want to mention the strap first as it somewhat ties into the dimensions. By default, this CH2891 comes fitted with a brown leather military style bund strap. I actually had high hopes for this given the excellent experience I've had with my leather fossil wallet, which has been my go-to for several years now. Unfortunately, this is the first of many letdowns. While I don't like the look of these straps, they are comfortable, but this one has some clear issues. Firstly, the upper both looks and feels cheap. It quickly shows heavy creasing, and while the thickness may hold the strap together for a long time, I'd imagine it would start to look ragged rather quickly. Because as we know, cheap straps don't age well. Additionally, the sheer bulk of it boosts the on-wrist depth to well over 15 millimeters. This was already a fairly deep watch to begin with, and this strap makes it the thickest I've ever looked at. For most men's wrists, this is gonna make this watch look really chunky, a look that I'm not fond of. Personally, I'd instantly change this for something that doesn't pass underneath the watch at the first opportunity possible, unless you have truly enormous wrists. Luckily, it has quick release tabs so you can speedily get rid of it. The case design is fairly unique and it definitely interested me when I saw the renderings online, it features some unusual areas at 12 and six o'clock, just above the lugs, where an angled transparent section sits above a black internal bezel. It appears that this is part of the mineral glass that covers the rest of the dial, so it's fairly impressive to see this custom shape so well integrated. The glass itself is the type that you might expect at this price point, so it will give you some limited scratch protection. Unfortunately, the rest of the case falls short. In fact, I had to head online to double check the material used because it feels so cheap. According to the case rear and many third party sites, this is stainless steel, though interestingly, none specify the type of stainless steel used. It wouldn't surprise me if this is an inferior type rather than the standard 316L steel used in most modern wristwatches, as it feels noticeably light considering the size. That combined with the lackluster finishing initially made me think that this watch was constructed of some other inexpensive alloy. I'd love to see if any of you in the comment section can find any additional information about this part of the watch. The pushes and crown look good, but are equally as disappointing. At a glance, these look like screw down pushes. However, they're just styled to look like them. The ridges aren't functional in any way whatsoever. While the buttons don't feel good to use, they aren't terrible. Unfortunately, the unsigned crown is. On the surface, it looks fine, and in terms of grip, I've got no complaints. However, this is by far and away the loosest crown I've ever experienced on a wristwatch. Generally, quartz watches feature crowns that can be rotated when not pulled out, but this takes it to the next level. You can spin this like a Beyblade, even with the tiniest amount of pressure, and it continues rotating for a split second after you let go. It's hard to convey this on camera, but it's far from confidence inspiring. Unlike with the Vostok I recently covered, I don't trust that this is for practical reasons. 
Functionally though, time and date adjustments are no problem and probably better than I expected given the swirling. What's most surprised is that this watch has an advertised 10 ATM water resistance or 100 meters. A watch with this rating should easily be viable for swimming and some shallow diving. How a watch with such a poor case and a free spinning crown can form a strong enough seal for that is beyond me. If you handed me this watch without telling me the water resistance, I would have guessed that this was splash proof at most. Only further testing will reveal the true performance, though if Fossil are to be believed, then they must be applauded for making this watch fairly waterproof despite its flaws. The dial though, the dial is a disaster. There are some aspects that give you hope, such as the dark date window and the well integrated textured sub dials. I thought the watch looked quite good online, yet in person, it looks like a cheap knockoff, even though this is a genuine product. The bezel arrow above the 12 o'clock marker sits clearly further left than it should. The 12 o'clock markers themselves are visibly misaligned with the right one sitting higher. Several other applied hour markers are also incorrectly placed and angled. The top of the dark date window is cut off, indicating either a misaligned movement or dial or possibly both. The rose gold colored rings give the impression that the sub dials are inset, though on closer inspection, it appears the rings are applied on top of a flat surface. The eagle eyed of you may notice that the hands used in this watch are slightly different to those on the renderings. My research tells me that the product shots are outdated and that this new solid handset has replaced the former skeletonized hands. I think this is a visual improvement and it does add some loom. Nevertheless, I think the watch would look better if the owl markers and hands were color coordinated. Another frustrating aspect of this watch for me is the second hand, because it's one of the most inconsistent that I've come across. This second hand, especially when moving down the right side of the watch, jumps around, sometimes hitting the markers, then suddenly past or behind them. This suggests that the movement itself is to blame rather than its alignment. I opened the back of the watch to see what type of Chinese movement this was using, but discovered a Japanese Miyota JS26 instead. I googled the module and found it selling on sites individually at least for $30 a unit. Obviously, these will be much cheaper when bought in bulk. But even so, I've reviewed watches with much cheaper movements that are far more consistent than this. Perhaps this module is just dodgy. Nevertheless, it's another bad experience for me with Miyota Quartz movements. In fact, I can't remember the last time I had a good experience with them. I guess functionally, it's not going to make a difference to the watch's accuracy. It's just ugly to see that hand going all over the place, especially when you spent 100 quid on a watch. At first, I was shocked that a watch this bad had such high reviews online. But the more I thought about it, the more it makes sense. Firstly, I think it highlights how frustratingly the general public have very little idea of what constitutes a good low cost watch. Many of the positive comments and ratings mention how they believe the watch looks expensive or high quality which is the opposite in my opinion. I think the watch looks cheap and gaudy. To me, it looks like someone has tried to make a super cheap watch look expensive to appeal to the masses who are after a expensive looking watch. I guess this watch does look big and flashy from a distance, despite looking terrible at a macro level. But either way, it definitely gives me more motivation to keep making these videos. I also think that the sunk cost fallacy or something similar might be in play here too. While this is only a 100 pound watch, for a lot of people, that's a lot of money, and it's likely the most they've ever spent on a wristwatch. I bet some of the positive reviews are from people subconsciously trying to convince themselves that they've got a good deal and that this watch was worth their investment. As a whole, this watch is about what I expected, if not slightly worse. While I'm not a fan of the design, to me it's the quality control that's the concern. This is so sloppy, it looks like it's been lobbed together by a primary school child, quite frankly. The box was finished to a really high standard. It's just a shame that the watch wasn't. It feels like they've cut so many corners that all the corners are gone, leaving you with a big ball of nothingness. I'd love to hear in the comments if you think that there are other fossil watches out there that are better than these. I know that some of their smart watches at least have got some good reviews. But to me, this one, this is just a 15 quid watch disguised as a 150 pound one. At least that's the RRP. If Amazon hadn't been kind enough to cover the cost of this watch, there's no way on planet Earth I would have spent my own money on this, uh, without a refund at least. I'm sure here in this, some of you out there will want to know how I think this stacks up against the likes of, you know, movements, Vinceros, other fashion watches out there. I have to say, I think this watch is clearly worse than the Vincero Chronograph I reviewed, though maybe a fraction better than the MVMT, which isn't saying much. 
I also think the watch from the Skagen sub-brand I recently reviewed, while not great, is better too. If you want a decent looking fashion chronograph kind of like this though, I'd recommend going with the Pagani Design Chronograph from AliExpress. This watch is made in China, that one is too, but it's a fraction of the price, looks better and has higher quality materials to boot. That watch actually looks better than the price tag rather than far worse. You can watch that video next in the iCard above and also in the video description. In the last review, we looked at the Casio Edifice EFV 110D. Also a much better watch for half the price. Here's where that watch ended on our wall of watches. It's time for your say on this fossil. Where do you think it should go on our wall? Do you reckon this watch is... Low quality Chinese garbage. Uncool, cool, or ice cold? Give me your thoughts in the comment section. Is this better than Rolex? You know what, maybe. <laughs> Consider subscribing for more videos. I'll see you in the next one.